Hey, welcome everyone in this new video tutorial about Diablo like dungeon generation. In this video, we're just going to build uh, simple protections against infinite loops. So, because we have quite a high number of functions that might be looping uh, it, uh, indefinitely, and we don't want that. So, I'm currently, I was in our end tile function add end tile to, to layout in this function we're actually looping looping back through the function whenever we don't find a random location for the end tile so we're just going to we're just going to build a simple protection here so let's say we we add another local variable which is going to be max loops max loop this is going to be an int and i'm just going to find re the references to the, uh, i don't want to duplicate that variable okay so we want to increment max loop in here and we want to say actually we could just use that integer and tile step back. Are we resetting? We are not resetting anything. So I think we're just going to say, we're just going to get rid of that variable. And we're going to say, if end tile step back is greater than uh, inferior, is inferior to a local variable uh no this is going to be a variable this is going to be max and tile retry we're going to branch and if it's inferior we're going to loop back but if it's not we're going to throw an error maximum amount of and tile retries Reached, check your metrics. This would mean we specified an end tile we couldn't spawn. So this we're going to make this red like this, and we're going to make sure we have let's say 20 max end tile retries. I'm going to hit play and it did not change anything and we're going to get through some other function just to make sure we don't have infinite loops so we don't generate tile layout we are looping through our seven seven times we cannot we cannot loop indefinitely Spawn the tile layout as well, generate extra connection. It looks like we might be... No, we're just breaking the loop. We are not... In any case, we are looping through any of this stuff. Once more than we actually see. And are we looping... Are we looping back? No, we are breaking the loop as well. Oh, that brings good memories. We're breaking the loop in here as well. And we are not actually... Are we? I also need to make sure we are not actually rerunning that function because if I remember correctly, we, we already done that in the past. One function calling itself and that's not good practice. So... This is not generating the tile layout. We are not rerolling the dungeon. Temp rerolls, maximum reroll amount. This was our protection. So I think we are good on that side. Calculate the layout. We are adding the tile, generating the layout, blah, blah, blah. Calculate steps to start. If, if I'm not mistaken, at some point we are if we need to reroll the dungeon, we reroll the dungeon and we protected that. Okay. Well, that w that's that's what we just saw. So 
when we calculate our steps to start, we actually could be endlessly rerunning that function. So we're just going to add a local variable this time because I don't want this to be a, var uh, a metric. Uh, max anti retry, I wanted this to be a metric. Why? Because it's likely. This is likely. I, I, this is not interesting as a metric. I don't want to. I just want this to be calculated no matter what happens. Rather, and this this one, I want to be warned if I specify the wrong metrics in my dungeon simulator <coughs> generator. I mean, so I want. So this is a metric, and this is not. And this is what is this? This is the max uh, calculates retry calculate retry amount uh, max calculate retry amount max calculate amount and we'll be will be good with this so we're incrementing it actually we are this is going to be retries if retries is is inferior to uh, I want 20 retries so you might want to increment that so we are actually going to promote that to a variable because why is this finally a metric I'm going to call that max steps step start calculation retry why do i want this to ver to be a variable in the end because the longer your dungeon is the more likely the more likely your dungeon generator is to calculate this high amount of times and if you end up with strange with strange results in your dungeon like uh, tiles not being a dead at the right position or not Mm, especially concerning the, the if you find yourself facing problems related to steps to start the number of steps to start for each tile you might want to increase that number so I'm just going to make it 200 in order not to have any problem with it so and if we reach it our maximum amounts of Mm, step start calculation we are going to throw an error so I'm going to create a new function that is going to say print uh, debug error this is going just going to get a pre uh, a string as parameter and this is going to call debug this is going to be read like this this way I won't have to specify my error are read each time I want to call an error so I will just put that in our print functions I'm going to find the references to my deb of my debug function and I want to I want to debug to use debug error from now on so that's not an error this is an error so I'm just going to get read real quick of the different errors I have I'm currently displaying and the benefits also the good sides of doing a debug error function is that I can turn them off if I want just by making sure oh this is not an error reroll the dungeon i'm sure this was an error as well if i don't want any if i don't want errors anymore i can just uh, put a branch in here and just uh, and just promote that to a function and disable error using a simple boolean so where else are we using this we are not 
maximum reroll amount. So we actually remove the we remove the text in here. No, we just didn't create it for now. So this is, this was the current function we were in, and we're going to say we didn't we tried to calculate steps to start too many times. So yep, this is it. What other function might be causing infinite loops? We should be good for now. And I'm making this video because I think some of you guys have infinite loop errors and getting these prints in your logs will tell you what kind of errors, where are the errors actually. So that's why I'm doing this video. So hope you and in any case you have to protect your infinite loop, prevent your infinite loop from happening. So in any case it was really beneficial for any of us, for all of us. So that's it for this video guys. Hope you hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.